tell you, every teacher would love that opportunity to just stand up and everyone gets quiet, huh? Good morning. We welcome you to our service this morning. We're glad to see you. Thank you for braving the lovely weather outside uh, to come in to worship this morning. Uh, God is very good to us. Now, in some churches, when the minister says, God is good, what do the people in the congregation say? Okay, that's good too. So what happens is, if the minister says God is good, people will say all the time. And then the minister will say all the time, the people will say God is good. God is good. All the time. Amen. Amen. Didn't, didn't seem rehearsed at all. Uh, we're glad to have you here. Uh, so those who are joining us online, let's get ready, Malcolm. Uh, we will turn and wave to those who are joining us online. Hi, guys. Welcome. Glad that you're here. Wave at the camera. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's so good that God, in his goodness and mercy, has brought us here today. Uh, sometimes the only smile we may see all week is in church. So it's good that we take the moment to do that. So let's turn to the person to your left and to your right and give them a big smile. Very nice, very nice. So we are here to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning and we're glad for that opportunity. Let us stand as we sing our song of opening, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. to worship this morning reminds us that Lord we have given up our pride 
turned away from our arrogance, we are not concerned with matters or subjects too difficult for us. Instead, we are content, Father, to come into your presence and be at peace. As a child lays quietly in his mother's arms, so our heart is quiet within us. Let us continue to trust in the Lord now and forever. Let us pray. Father, we're thankful that you can bring us safely here this morning. It may be cold outside, but our hearts are warmed to be in your presence. Our hearts are warmed to be in the presence of those who love you. And we're here to find you and to worship you. We thank you for that opportunity. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your peace that you so quickly offer to us in spite of ourselves. This world is crazy out there, but Father, we can find peace as we rest in your arms. Rest trusting you, knowing that you've done everything that is necessary for our salvation. All we have to do is accept and hold on to that. So bless us as we worship you this day. Bless us in every aspect of this service. Bless the voices of the choir. Bless your words that come from your Bible. And may you teach us this day to be more like Jesus. I pray these things in the name of the one who has taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God is so faithful. God is so great. God is so loving for us. Let us remember that as we sing, Great is thy faithfulness.
Amen. Children, please come forth. And Lucas, if you want to get the offering plates, please. Okay, so we're going to talk about a word that you have heard probably a lot of times, but I want you to tell me what it means to you. What does the word peace mean to you? Say it nice and loudly so the mic can hear you. What, what does the word peace mean to you? Go ahead. What do you think? You want to say? No. <laughs> Friendliness. Friendliness. Okay. Nice. Friendliness. Anybody else? Now, no, you may be confused. We're not talking about a piece of cloth. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the word peace. In the world, people talk about peace. Peace, man. Most of you remember those days. I'm just cool, man. Whatever. Peace. Yes, you got it now? Yeah. Okay, what is it? Kindness. Kindness. Nice. Very nice. Do you know, for you three especially, that lady there, do you know what brings her peace? Anytime you go to sleep. <laughs> Anytime you sit quietly and read, mommy gets peace. The fact is, for each of us, peace comes in different ways. There are different things that may mean peace to you. Some people, peace means they can be streaming down a hill of snow. You ever gone skiing? It is so sweet and peaceful to swish down that slope, no problems. Not a black diamond hole, but just a nice easy one. That's peace. Or sometimes sitting on the beach. Oh, the sun feels so nice. Oh, here are the waves. That's so peaceful. But there's one kind of peace that everybody needs, but they don't have. And that is the peace that only God can offer. That peace that God offers you means no matter what is going on, you're okay. No matter what is happening, you're okay because you know that God is in control. That's the peace that God wants us to have. So no matter how crazy the children may be acting, we're at peace. No matter how silly somebody may be as they drive past us, honking at us, we're at peace. No matter if our homework is really tough, we're at peace because we're praying, God help me to finish this homework and do well. God help me to do my chores at home. God help me be to, to be obedient and nice to mommy and daddy. That brings peace to us and to others around us. That's the kind of peace that God wants you to have. A peace knowing that He is in control. You have no worries, no cares, because God loves you and God wants what's best for you. So find peace today. Find peace with your siblings. <laughs> find peace with those who don't try to be so nice to you because God is the one who is totally in control and totally wants us to have that peace. Okay, let's pray. Father, we pray that you'll give us the strength to find peace in you. These young people will grow to know more and more about you and will find peace no matter what the world throws at them. May they find that peace in Jesus Christ. So continue to bless them, we ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, okay. So for us adults, it's tax time. Are you at peace? <laughs> you wish you didn't have to give back to those people. That's kind of what helps us have what we have in our world today. So when God asks us to give back, it's not to create problems for you. It's to give you peace. 
because he says when you return I will open the storehouses of heaven for you and you will be at peace because I'll take care of you so remember that every time we give back our tithe and our offerings that God isn't trying to take away our peace he's just trying to bless us even more let us pray father we thank you for the offerings that have been given the tithe that has been returned we ask that you will keep your promise that you will open the storehouses to us so that we'll not ever be unrestful that we will be at peace knowing that our other stuff is taken care of because we are faithful to you so bless us to trust you and bless the offerings that they will be used for this church in this community so that we'll continue to give you honor and glory we pray these things in Jesus name Amen we we'll now hear a special number by the choir. reading this morning is found in Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I will fear no one. The Lord protects me from all danger. I will never be afraid. When even evil men attack me and try to kill me, they stumble and fall. Even if a whole army surrounds me, I will not be afraid. Even if enemies attack me, I will still trust God. I've asked the Lord for one thing. 
one thing only do I want. To live in the Lord's house all my life. To marvel there at his goodness and to ask for his guidance. In times of trouble, he will shelter me. He will keep me safe in his temple and make me secure on a high rock. So I will triumph over my enemies around me. With shouts of joy, I will offer sacrifices in his temple. I will sing. I will praise the Lord. Hear me, O Lord. When I call to you, be merciful and answer me. When you said, come worship me, I answered, I will come, Lord. Don't hide yourself from me. Don't be angry with me. Don't turn your servant away. You have been my help. Don't leave me. Don't abandon me. O God, my Savior, my father and mother may abandon me, but the Lord will take care of me. Teach me, Lord, what you want me to do, and lead me along a safe path, because I have many enemies. Don't abandon me to my enemies who attack me with lies and threats. I know that I will live to see the Lord's goodness in this present life. Trust in the Lord. Have faith. Do not despair. Trust in the Lord. Thanks be to God for the reading of his holy word. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What a day it is that we live in where we can do just about anything without lifting a finger. We can say, hey Alexa, hey Google. And the day's coming where you don't even have to drive your car. Sit back and your car will take you where you think you want to go. Sometimes we think when that is the case, we should be the happiest, most peaceful people on earth because everything is done for us. You can set it up that when you wake up in the morning your coffee is sitting there waiting for you. You can set it up so that your coffee can be brought right to your bed. No, that's your spouse. <laughs> oh, you may say, what? What? <laughs> Maybe you're Okay, let's get there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But with all of this that's going on in our world, there still seems to be unrest. There still seems to be a, an uneasy feeling by many people. Because one, we don't know what's going to happen. We're not sure of what's going to happen. And as things have gone on since COVID, we just really don't know what's the next big thing that's going to happen. Today, we want to talk about something that would take away that fear and that concern. The topic of our sermon today is Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. Let us pray. Father, we are seeking your word to encourage and uplift us. Give us your spirit so that we will hear your word, know your word, and rest at peace in your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It was an interesting thing for the children of Israel. And any time I say the children of Israel, I want you to parlay that into us as Christians today. Because it's easy to look back and say, well, they, 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 they. But we are spiritual Israel. So whenever I use the term Israel, please think of yourself. Please think of us today. We find in the story of the book of Judges, a very interesting story. Gideon then realized that it was the Lord's angel he had seen, and he said in terror, Sovereign Lord, I have seen your angel face to face, but the Lord told him, Peace, don't be afraid, you will not die. The cycle of the children of Israel is simple. We see it clearly and probably it's what goes on for each one of us today. They become idolatrous, they forget the God of heaven, and they worship the idols wherever they are living. God allows their neighbors to attack them, make them slaves, beat them up. Israel is oppressed and enslaved, 
Israel cries out to God, Lord, don't you care about us? God raises up another deliverer. The deliverer fights and overcomes the enemy. Israel is delivered. Israel is at peace. It would be nice if in the cycle of us as Christians, this is where we stay, at peace. But just as the children of Israel did, sometimes we get there, that after the peace hits, Israel forgets God. They take him for granted. They think they've got it okay because there are no problems going on in their lives. And thus they go back into idolatry. Interestingly enough, when we forget God, we choose to worship something else. We as human beings are meant, built to worship. God created us with that innate want to have something to worship. What do we worship today besides God? Some people worship their car. Some people worship their home, their spouse, their beauty, whatever it may be. Now I'm going to get on Luke here for a second. Some people may even worship the Detroit Lions. But the fact is, all of the things that we worship, that we think are important, are nothing compared to what God wants for us. I still have to smile at this, Luke. Uh, when I was in Baltimore a few years ago, Baltimore Ravens were doing very well. Someone had bought a nice new Escalade. Back then it was fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. And they painted all over their truck, Go Ravens! I'm saying, what? <laughs> anyway, we get so caught up in stuff that we may forget who truly needs to be worshipped. Now I'm not saying, yes, enjoy sports, enjoy whatever. That's great. It gives us a nice out. We enjoy that. But make sure that we never forget the God that we serve because that's what's most important. That's what the children of Israel would do. So it says, once again, the people of Israel sinned against the Lord. So he let the people of Midian rule them for seven years. The Midianites were stronger than Israel and the people of Israel hid from them in caves and other safe places in the hills. Whenever the Israelites would plant their crops, the Midianites would come with the Amal Amalekites and the desert tribes and attack them. Then we would camp on the land and destroy the crops as far south as the area around Gaza. They would take all the sheep, cattle, donkeys and leave nothing for the Israelites to live on. They would come with their livestock and tents as thick as locusts. They and their camels were too many to count. They came and devastated the land, and Israel was helpless against them. What an experience the children of Israel had. Again, remember leaving Egypt, being protected, brought out of Egypt, being led to the promised land. But every time they forgot God, they would get into problems. Every time they would forget God, they would find themselves in a horrible situation. I am so thankful that God is not like us. Because if somebody leaves you enough times, if somebody mistreats you enough times, if somebody calls your names enough times, if they get angry at you enough times, pretty soon we say, okay, forget it. <laughs> I don't need this anymore. But that's not how our God is. In spite of the way they treated him, whenever they called out to his name, he was there for them. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help against the Midianites. The Bible tells us he sent them a prophet that brought a message of hope, rescued them from this. But then this is what God has to say. I told you that I am the Lord your God and that you should not worship the gods of the Amorites whose land you are now living in. But you have not listened to me. In the days of the judges, probably the most famous judge we may know of is the bottom one, Samson, of course. We know what his life was like. But we know there was one judge that we'll talk about today. His name was Gideon. 
Notice that for six years, the children of Israel were oppressed. But when they followed God and trusted God, and listened to what Gideon had to tell them to do, for 40 years, they were at peace. For 40 years, they were at rest. Then the Lord's angel came to the village of Ophrah, and sat under the oak tree that belonged to Joash, a man of the clan of Abiezer. His son Gideon was threshing some wheat secretly in a wine press, so that the Midianites would not see him. I find it interesting he was threshing in a wine press, because any time the Midianites would see them doing whatever, they would come and take it. So they hid within a wine press. The Lord's angel appeared to him there and said, The Lord is with you, brave and mighty man. I don't know how brave and mighty he was if he's hiding in the wine press. But understand this, my friends. You can be brave and wise. <laughs> you can be brave and wise. So we find then that in the situation of Gideon, here he is up in the far left, you see Ophrah, not Oprah, Ophrah. <laughs> in case you're wondering, what is he talking about Oprah for? Uh, Ophrah, that's where Gideon was from. And today, we're going to look at this aspect of Gideon's life. It says 135,000 Midianites, Ishmaelites, invade Israel annually. Gideon visited by the angel in the hometown of Ophrah. Gideon's sacrifice is miraculously consumed by fire. As I was preparing this sermon, it got so full of stuff. I said, oh, I can't keep you guys till 3 o'clock today. And so I cut it short. So you'll only be here until 2. Why are you laughing? Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that to you. We're going to split the sermon in two. Uh, so next week, we're going to look at another aspect of what Gideon had to do. Because amazingly, when God puts us in a position, as we talked about called by name, when God calls you to do something and we trust him, it may seem rather impossible. It may seem rather crazy. It may seem, I could never do that. But when God gives you something to do, he provides the strength and the power that you need. And there's so much more to the life of Gideon. Feel free to read uh, all of this in Judges chapter 6, verses, uh, chapter six through verse 9. Chapter 6 through 9. Uh, so that you can see more of what Judges uh, did, God did through Gideon. So we see then that Gideon comes in play in the area near Issachar, one of the tribes of Israel. So why a wine press? Well, back in the day, wine presses were somewhat deep so that you can get the wine in there and tread on it. Uh, usually it seemed the women did that, but this picture portrays the men doing it. That's fine. Uh, you know, not to be sexist in any way. But this is what a wine press would look like. So inside of that wine press is where Gideon was threshing his grain so that he would not be seen, the Midianites would not come and take this from them. So the angel appears to him and says, Oh, brilliant, wise, strong, handsome, courageous man. You know, that's what men need to hear, ladies. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we need to hear that. Yeah, okay, that's another sermon. So this is what the angel said to Gideon. So Gideon wanted to make sure that this was an angel of God. So he says, if I may ask, sir, why has God been treating us this way? Why has God allowed us to go through what we have been going through? Why has God seemingly left us alone to the Midianites to be attacked and abused? Why has all this happened to us if the Lord is with us? Have you ever asked yourself that question? God, I am faithful to you. I serve you. I love you. Why are you letting this happen to me? <clears throat> Excuse me. God has no problem with you asking that question. But Gideon continues on, what happened to all the wonderful things that our fathers told us the Lord used to do? How he brought them out of Egypt. The Lord has abandoned us and left us to the mercy of the Midianites. 
God has abandoned us. My friends, you've probably heard it said time and time again. When it seems that God is far away, you are the one who moved. God doesn't play games with us that way. Our, our, littlest, our youngest grandson, I don't know, this just started on Friday. We had him for the day and he'd be staring at me. And when I look at him, he'd look away. He's six months old. And I'd look away, he'd start staring at me again. And I'd look at him, and he'd look away. Not sure what's going on. <laughs> Maybe I'm just too good looking for him. <clears throat> but the fact is, whatever we were doing, sometimes we think that's what God does. When we come towards him, he turns away. When we aren't nice enough to him, he turns away. But God is consistently there for us. Then the Lord ordered him, go with all that you have, with your great strength, and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I myself am sending you. Okay. Okay, just want to make sure. Thanks. Thanks. Then the Lord ordered him, go with all your great strength and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I myself am sending you. Wait, wait, wait. Me? Gideon? From the weakest of the clans of the tribe of Manasseh? I am the least important member of my family. Me? The Lord answered, you can do it. Because I will help you. You will crush the Midianites as easily as if they were only one man. One person with God is greater than the greatest army. One person holding on to God can do so much more than a great army without God. So Gideon says, me, I'm going to crush all this army that have beating, been beating us up for so many years. Then Gideon says something very interesting. And I think it teaches us a very important lesson. Gideon replied, if you are pleased with me, give me some proof that you are really the Lord. God wants us to test him. God wants us to prove who he is. In Isaiah, God says, come, let us reason together. Though your sins may be as scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. God says, let's talk about this. You have a problem with me, God says, let's talk about it. God doesn't have any problem with our problems. When we talk to him, he will clearly let us know what is important. One of my professors in university, he had a very interesting way of doing things. Anytime you said, can I please talk to you, he says, come on walk with me, talk with me. That's how he took care of any kind of counseling. We would walk. That's how he did that and I love that. And that's how God says, I'm going to walk with you through this. I'm not sending you alone, I'm going to walk with you through this. So he asked, I want you to prove that you are the Lord. Please do not leave until I bring you an offering of food and the Lord says, I will stay until you come back. The fact is, we continually need to bring offerings to God. Not so much money, but of ourselves. The children of Israel had to sacrifice, give something of themselves to God in worship. Not just once a week, but every day. God wants us to offer ourselves to him. So Gideon went into his house and cooked a young goat and used a bushel of flour to make bread without any yeast. He put the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot, brought them to the Lord's angel under the oak tree and gave them to him. The angel told him, put the meat and the bread on this rock and pour the broth over them. Gideon did so. Gideon was obedient. Gideon did just what God asked him to do. 
Gideon listened in every aspect, even to the littlest thing, the iota of anything. He says, I will do exactly as you tell me to do. It may remind us of the story of Elijah. When Elijah was fighting against the prophets of Baal and they had chosen their different uh, heifers to burn, waiting to see the fire of God come down either from Baal or from God himself. And when it was Elijah's turn, Elijah cut up his, he says, pour buckets of water on it for me. And I'm sure they were starting to chuckle, man, this guy is crazy. We're trying to fight this thing, we're trying to light this thing with fire, but he's going to get it wet. Okay, we'll do as you say. Do it again. But God sent down fire from heaven and consumed that bull that day. So when he asked him to do this, then the Lord's angel reached out and touched the meat and the bread with the end of the stick he was holding. Fire came out of the rock and burned up the meat and the bread. Then the angel disappeared. Many commentators believe that not only was the angel of the Lord there, but Jesus himself was there, the Lord. Gideon then realized that it was the Lord's angel he had seen, and he said in terror, Sovereign Lord, I have seen your angel face to face. What an experience that must have been for Gideon. To be obedient, to do what God asked him to do, to make sure that the message that he was given was true, to go and defeat the Midianites. He asked for proof. But the Lord told him, Peace, don't be afraid. You will not die. Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it, The Lord is Peace. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. And it is still standing at Ophrah, which belongs to the clan of Abiezer. Jehovah Shalom. Shalom is a beautiful Hebrew word which has many meanings. Yes, we understand peace, meaning without conflict or problems, but it is also a completeness, a restfulness, an easiness, knowing that everything is okay. That's the peace that God wants us to have. That's the peace that God wants us to have as we start 2024. What is this year going to offer to us? We have no idea. But we need to be at peace. I don't know, did you guys see probably by the end of December where supposedly they were never going to make or they were not going to make Kleenexes anymore in Canada? Anybody see that? I wonder if that was just a hope that people will buy tons of it. I don't know. I, I don't know. I haven't paid much more attention to it. But you know what? I'm not worried about them getting rid of all Kleenexes. We will always have our sleeves. <laughs> you guys pray for me, please. Yeah. <laughs> My wife looks at me sometimes. Anyway, so the fact is, we don't know what this year is going to offer to us. All we need to do is make sure we stay connected to the God who loves us, who cares for us. Isaiah 26.3 says, You, Lord, give perfect peace to those who keep their purpose firm and put their trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. He will always protect us. He is Jehovah. Shalom. He is the one who cares for us. He is the one who will do whatever it takes to save us. This world whatever it offers us that's nice but he offers something that is far beyond this world far beyond anything we could ever imagine far beyond anything that we think is great on this earth he offers us eternal life and that should give us peace when we're sick when we're not sure if our health will carry us we're at peace because we know whose hands we are in we know who cares for us. We know who loves us. We know who is there for us. And that makes all the difference. All the difference. So we rest in his goodness. We rest in his love. 
We rest in the fact of knowing that our God is God. Our God cares for us. Our God will always be there for us. And that makes all the difference in the world for us. Let us pray. Father, we pray that you will give us the strength to be like Gideon. To trust you, bless you. To trust you, even though we can't see what's going on completely. To trust you, even though the world says this is going on, that is going on, that may happen, that may not happen. We are at rest and trusting in you. Father, with that in mind, we ask that you will protect us in this world. That you will protect our faith. That you will protect us, that we will trust you. That we will leave our plans, our cares, our concerns in your hands. Give us the strength to do what you put before us. Letting us remember that you are with us. You will protect us and guide us. So Father, give us that peace as we seek after that. You are peace. You bring peace. You give peace. To know Jesus, as it is said, is to know peace. Know Jesus means no peace. So we pray that you'll help us to remember that and trust our hands, trust our lives into your hands. Father, we want to pray today especially for Christine Fullerton, Gail Grandin, David McGeorge, Linda Nickel, John Pakuda, Jeff Perry, Eleanor Sabhani. We also want to remember Carol today in the loss of her brother. We pray that you'll let her feel your hands by her side, that you'll feel, she will feel your presence and know that you are cared that she is cared for, and that he is cared for in your grace and mercy. Father, we pray for our politicians, our leaders. We so would love to see our country become more of a Christian country, where leaders want to follow your will, your word, not the dollar, not the masses. But Father, if that does not happen, we will be at peace. Because as the world goes, gets worse, it tells us that Jesus' return is soon, soon, soon. And may we rest and be at peace in that. So Father, give us strength to keep our hands in yours. Fill our lives with your peace. So that no matter what happens in this world, we know that there's a world to come where we can live forever with you and be at peace forevermore. So bless us to this end, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is so good. God is good. And all the time, amen and amen. So take the time to trust him and know what he says is true. Take time to be holy.
Just a reminder of our announcements that there will be a social right after the service today. Uh, we are having a Bible class on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. on the book of Hebrews, and then a tech class at 1 p.m. on Thursdays after, Thursday afternoons. So if you'd like to join in any of those, please feel free to do that. So, as we have served God here today, you have been called by God to live in the love of God, the Father, and the protection of Christ. So share his peace this week with those around you. Share his peace in your home. Share his peace to those who you meet on the street or at work. May they have peace. And ultimately, may mercy, peace, and love be yours in full measure. It is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.